Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today to talk about allowable activities. My name is Col Easton, and I'm a senior land services officer for the land management team in the Northwest. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I pay my respect to elders past, present and emerging. Look, if you think of any questions throughout the presentation, please send them through and I'll do my best to address them for you. Okay, let's get started. Allowable activities are those vegetation management activities where there is no need for a formal approval under Part 5A of the Local Land Services Act. These relate to basic on-farm vegetation management activities. Please keep in mind that you might require other statutory approvals for these works. For example, works in or near a waterway may require a permit under the Water Management Act of 2000. Look, be aware that um, you know, allowable activities aren't intended to be utilised as a way of increasing available cropping and grazing country. But don't fear, there are other options available to you under the Land Management Code. If you're interested in undertaking works of this nature, please ask one of our staff about clearing options open to you. Now back to it. The extent to which allowable activities can be applied is dependent on a few variables. Let's take a look at these. First and foremost, you need to know the zoning of your land. Allowable activities can only be applied on rural lands, that is RU1, 2, 3, 4 and 6 zoned land. For the purposes of the Act, RU5 is not considered rural land. The second variable is where in New South Wales your property is. New South Wales is split into three zones for allowable activities. For those in the northwest region, most of you will fall within the central zone, and that's shown in orange on the slide. Some might fall within the western zone, and that's in red. If you're not sure which area you're in, we can help you with that. The third variable is your land category. On category two, volatile and sensitive regulated land, limits are placed on the extent and type of, of, of allowable activities which can be undertaken. On excluded land, allowable activities cannot be used. This map of New South Wales is publicly available. To see if any of these three categories are present on your property, simply Google NVR New South Wales. To easily find your property, you can type your address into the search bar, which is on the top of the map. The Act provides greater flexibility for you, the landholder, to assess how much area you need to clear using allowable activities. There are still absolute maximum distances which can be cleared under these allowable activities. This table describes these. I really want to emphasise to you though that clearing must be undertaken to the minimum extent necessary. This means that it's up to you to decide within the bounds of the Act which is reasonable and justifiable quantity of, of clearing to undertake to achieve the outcome you're after. In a nutshell, if you don't need to clear the full distance, then don't. For those in the central zone, you can clear up to 30 metres in total for your rural infrastructure. This distance is reduced to 12 metres in the event that your property is a small holding and six metres if the clearing location is on category two vulnerable or sensitive regulated land. You can't stack distances. For example, if a road is next to a pipeline, the maximum distance for clearing isn't the sum of the two maximum distances for the road and the maximum distance for the pipe. So it's not 60 metres. When it comes to clearing for a boundary fence, each landholder gets a maximum of 30 metres on their side of the fence. 
Again, though, it's the responsibility of the landholder to exercise reasonable judgment when it comes to how much is actually required for a given activity. For example, if you're clearing a fence line as an allowable activity, and this activity produces wood suitable for firewood, it would be seen to be reasonable to then, it, sorry, it wouldn't be seen to be reasonable to remove more trees to utilise firewood. Please note though that clearing for these activities requires that grasses and other ground layer species remain intact. Let's see how allowable activities can be applied. As part of the allowable activities, landholders can clear for rural infrastructure. On the screen is a list of infrastructure examples. The most common infrastructure clearing we see is clearing for fence lines and tracks. If you're on a small holding or on vulnerable or sensitive regulated land, remember that the maximum clearing distances are reduced. And we showed you that on the previous slide. The list of allowable activities which you can utilise and rural infrastructure you can clear for also decreases. Just, just contact us for more details on clearing in these areas. In addition to clearing for rural infrastructure, you can utilise the following allowable activities shown on the slide. You might notice on the screen the pink and orange dots. When it comes to vulnerable and sensitive land, only the allowable activities with these dots next to them can be used. I just want to take you through Briefly, a, a couple of these, okay? Firstly, imminent risk. Vegetation can be removed when it's reasonably necessary to remove or reduce an imminent risk to personal injury or damage to your property. Secondly, environmental protection works. This is an allowable activity which allows for works associated with rehabilitation of land uh, towards its natural state or works to prevent environmental degradation. Examples of this are erosion control works and riparian zone restorations. Again, it is possible other approvals may be required for this sort of work. Environmental protection works don't include coastal protection works under the Coastal Protection Act or works resulting in production gain. Just ask our staff about applying, applying the code for these sorts of things. Next, sustainable grazing. This is the grazing by livestock and the management of grasslands used for grazing that's not likely to result in the substantial long-term decline in the structure and the composition of native vegetation. Management of grasslands includes, without limitation, the oversowing or the fertilisation of grasslands. It's really important to note, though, that native ground covers can't be sprayed out nor can the introduction of exotic species result in native species being outcompeted. Premier digit and buffer grass are examples of species which should not be utilised under this option given how persistent they are. Lastly, fire break clearing in the western zone. For a fire break in the western zone only, a maximum distance of 100 metres can be cleared where the native vegetation is predominantly mallee. Look, if you've got any questions about fire management in any part of the state, please talk to your local RFS. Before undertaking works, please review um, any fact sheets that you'll find on the LLS website for further details, and also contact your LLS officer for any queries you might have. Another important consideration when undertaking clearing is threatened species. Landholders need to ensure that they do not knowingly harm any threatened species or their habitat. So when clearing for construction timber, firewood, public works or gravel pits, the following applies. The vegetation must not comprise or be likely to comprise a threatened species or part of a threatened ecological community or the habitat of a threatened species under the Biodiversity Conservation Act of 2016, or the habitat of threatened species, populations, 
or ecological communities of fish under the Fisheries Management Act of 1994. Two common threatened ecological, <laughs> ecological communities in the northwest are Coolabar Black Box Woodland and White Box Yellow Box Blakely's Red Gum Grassy Woodland. There are many threatened species throughout the region, including koalas, region honey eaters, spot tailed quolls, swift parrots, and many, many more. Please be mindful of these species and their homes. If you would like more information on threatened species, please contact New South Wales in Environment, Energy and Science. They were the Office of Environment and Heritage. Our land management staff contact details along with the LGAs they cover are on the screen. Please don't hesitate to contact any of us with queries. If you're unsure of who you best should contact, just phone the 1300 795 299 number that's also on the screen. After this session, a couple of links to relevant allowable activity fact sheets will be posted, but to find us some more information, simply Google Land Management LLS. That's Land Management LLS. There's contact information, a bunch of additional fact sheets uh, on vegetation management if you go there. Look, thanks for joining us. Please keep posting your comments and questions. We love to see them and we'll continue to respond to them. Again, I'd like to thank everyone who joined us today. Northwest LLS officer Sarah Chapman is going to host another SMOCO session on the 26th of October, and uh, that's at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, join her as she goes through river processes, which is a really interesting topic, and the importance of riparian management. I want to leave you, though, with a final reminder. Call before you clear.